Hey, Courtney, when was the last time you uh, had the pleasure of coaching a true freshman quarterback who was also your starter? Jeez. Uh, boy, I don't know if I haven't really thought of that's a good question. I don't know if that, that I know that I have. Uh, back in uh, early 2000s when I was head coach at Upper Iowa, we had a guy that uh, played as a true freshman a bunch, but, but we only started in one game. So um, hard to say quarterback-wise a true freshman's been in the fire this much. Okay, so I guess that leads into my next question. How have you uh, been bringing Will along given this unique situation? Well, the biggest thing has been, even if he hasn't gotten the physical rep, making sure that he's taken every rep mentally. You know, what would I do? What, what would my, my thought process be? So every time Nick or Jaron has taken a rep, trying to make sure that, that Will is taking that rep mentally so that he can process how would I handle the situation. All right, thanks so much. Michael. Ready to go, Michael. All right, let's go on to Fitz. Hey, Coach. Uh, <laughs> What are you, are you going to try to do anything in particular to try to get uh, the receivers a little bit more involved in the offensive game plan this week? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we need to try to get the ball spread around more. And, and all I'm getting at there is, you know, if we can have seven, eight, nine guys have touches uh, from the receiver standpoint, I think it makes everybody more engaged. I think it keeps them knowing that, hey, I don't know when my call's coming or when my opportunity's coming. Um, last week, unfortunately, or two weeks ago, you know, didn't get a whole bunch of reps in, in, in general. Um, I don't know how many completions we had, but it couldn't have been more than about 10. Um, and, and we've got to do a better job of just staying on the field, sustaining drives, um, taking what they give us, but, but also spreading the ball around. And not, we can't become where there's only two dudes that, that people need to worry about. And what's it mean for this offensive line to have Cooper Beebe back? Well, I think it's a huge deal uh, as much as anything from a mindset. Um, you know, even though Cooper's young, uh, Cooper wants to be physical. He wants to be a, a young man that as the game wears on, where, where he's starting to really get after people. And um, the other thing that I think it does, it allows us to have a little bit more flexibility and moving people around and, and guys not having to uh, get out there and play for, you know, 60 snaps. Guys being able to play, you know, 40 snaps and, 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 let the O-line really um, ebb and flow a little bit as the game goes, rather than only having five, maybe six guys get snaps. Thanks, Coach. Kellis? Chris mentioned earlier this week that you guys spent a lot of time giving some young players some extra reps in practice last week. Um, given that that was the case, who, who maybe stood out and impressed you during that time? You know, I don't know if any one particular guy did, but there was probably – five true freshmen that, that I really felt like grew. Uh, and, and a big, big part of that was because of the true live reps. Um, now, I also felt like going against our own defense makes us a lot better. Um, it, you know, obviously our front four, um, very, very good. And not just the quote four starters. Our, our entire, you know, guys that we don't get to play against each week because they're not scouts, they make us better every week that we do it. Um, I felt like our old line uh, showed, showed improvement. Um, I felt like some of the younger uh, skill guys in general showed improvement. You know, Keon Mosey got better um, because of getting the, the more reps. Um, and now, now we got to take some of those young guys to the field and, and, and see what they can do when it's on game day. John? Yeah, hey, Courtney. Uh, Coach had mentioned earlier this week that Malik had been battling an injury. Just how much have, have injuries factored into his slow start this year personally? Well, unfortunately for Malik, uh, uh, he's yet to have, you know, five, six, seven, eight weeks in a row where he's truly healthy. Uh, I'm talking going back to last season and, and then now going into this year. Um, and then didn't have spring ball, didn't have the summer conditioning. Um, it put him, you know, put him a little bit in a situation where I don't know that he's, he's been able to just go out and grind for six, seven, eight weeks in a row and keep getting better at his craft. Um, we got to do a good job of making sure that, 
that not only Malik, but if it's Phillip Brooks, if it's Malik, if it's Sebastian, all those guys get touches so that they can keep getting better. Uh, and that that's the getting better part is just a mindset of, hey, all this work that I put in every day, it's going to pay off and I'm going to have opportunity to make plays that are in front of me. I know you mentioned <clears throat> trying not to be an offense where it's just two two guys out there that everyone's focusing on. How much have you seen Texas Tech, like TCU, as the weeks have gone on, defenses really scheme around Deuce and, and trying to keep him contained? Um, to this point, n not as much as maybe you would think. And, and part of that is because we obviously see things out of Deuce and, and we see things out of Briley where, we, where you say, wow, that, that guy has made some impact plays. Um, I think as, a, as an entire offense, though, we still have enough skill guys out there that they haven't been able to just say, hey, these two guys we need to, quote, shut down. Appreciate it, Courtney. Thanks. You bet. All right, let's do these last three raised hands real quick, starting with Michael. Yeah, Courtney, you seem to strike a pretty good balance utilizing the skills of uh, James Gilbert and Jordan Brown last year. How close do you feel like you are to, to hitting that same stride this year with uh, your running back crew? Uh, I think we're getting closer. Um, and, and the reason I say it that way is I, I really feel like Harry Trotter brings something to the table. I feel like, uh, obviously, Mosey, even though he's a young guy, brings something to the table. Everybody knows who Deuce is, obviously. But, but when, you, when you then throw in, um, you know, Tyler Burns, it's how, how do I get a good mesh going where each guy has opportunity to show what they can do and brings their talents to the table? Um, we've got to get where we stay on the field more. We've got to do a better job converting third downs so that we get more first and second down opportunities, and that will give more guys opportunity to play. Um, and, and that's that's not just, uh, you know, that that's all of us making a play when it's third down so that we can get more opportunity. Ryan? Hey, uh, Courtney, I want to take you back for a minute because uh, I'm working on a certain story, and, and when I was looking back in March of, 2019, you'd mentioned that one of the things at the time that really impressed you so much about Jaron was that when he was in the huddle, he was able to convince guys in the offensive line that even if he didn't know it, he was able to speak with that kind of confidence. Is that something where you have you guys had to build him back up a little bit as a staff, considering he's been fourth on the depth chart? And I know seeing a true freshman pass him on the depth chart couldn't be easy. Wouldn't be easy for me if I was in his position. So I just am curious if that's at all what you guys have to do. Yeah. I think he's still, uh, when he comes into the huddle, he's got, he's got that confidence. Um, I think the thing that he's probably done much, much more this year is he's thrown the ball extremely well. Um, not that he didn't throw it well before, but I, I mean, it's noticeably um, where you, you notice it and say, wow, the, that came out of his hand and that was accurate. And, and that hit the receiver in, in, you know, in stride. You know, and he's a guy that, honestly has had a bunch of reps the last two weeks going against our better players as well as going in what we would call the younger guys because he's still not very old where he's really shown that give him the ball let him make some plays uh got to have confidence but to get that confidence he's got to keep making those plays last one here Derek yeah coach kind of back to the running backs we've seen Keon Mosey mostly as a receiver out of the backfield how is he different from Deuce and how you can use him? Is he someone that you can use between the tackles a little more? Um, I think he can run between the tackles. Uh, right now, the, the opportunities he's gotten the most, though, are, are his ability to stretch the field. You know, I, I don't know what his 100-meter time was because he, he, you know, with, with how all this deal has gone down is his opportunity to truly really get on the track last year and, and see what he could do. You, you didn't get to see that, but – he can really stretch the field, and he catches the ball extremely well. So our ability to put him in the backfield and still possibly hand it to him, but also then motion him out of the backfield and let him use his raw speed to stretch the field has helped us.